Good morning. It's Friday, June 11th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Life Interrupted, and our scriptures, Hebrews chapter 11. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Three men, Abel, Enoch, and Noah, all men of faith in God, and one other piece of common experience, having their lives abruptly interrupted. Enoch had perhaps the most pleasant experience of the three. A friend and teacher of mine in seminary, Dr. Charles Graham, was the first I heard say it. He said, Enoch walked with God. He was really good friends with the Lord. And one day, after walking a good while, God said to him, Enoch, today we've walked so far together that we're closer to my home than yours. Why don't you just come on home with me? Going to heaven while you skip the funeral home stuff has a certain appeal. A little more disconcerting was Noah's boat excursion. Having God shut the door on everything Noah and family had ever known while the thunder and lightning roared and the earth broke up to push floods, well, that was no easy ride. But perhaps the toughest life interruption on the list belongs to Abel, who was the second child born to humanity. According to this account in scripture, Abel was a righteous man, meaning everything he did in life was intended to please God. Most funerals you've ever attended sound like they were for Abel. The preacher talks about just how wonderful the person was in that casket. But Genesis tells us Abel's earthly walk through this life was interrupted in the most violent and unjust of ways. His older brother, Cain, the firstborn child to Adam and Eve, got jealous over his younger brother's righteousness and killed him with a rock. Abel never got that wonderful funeral with all the aunts and uncles and community of friends. His brother just hid his broken, bloodied body in the dust. Now there's something quite at odds with conventional so-called Christian logic here. All three of these men never got the testimonial retirement dinner in Gold Watch. Abel's death was a betrayal of a brother who murdered him. Noah's validation party only had his wife and kids. Everybody else was dead. And Enoch, well, he just disappeared one day, leaving everybody to wonder, and the news cycle reporting goofy stuff about him running off to the south of France with his secretary or some other excuse. Anything but righteousness. Most so-called Christian thinking says, that just isn't right. They were good men, faithful to the Lord's work, and wham, life interrupted, ended without fanfare or thanks. Well, fast forward a few millennia and check out the book of Hebrews. Because of their faith, God was pleased. Whatever the news cycles read on the last day of Noah's, Abel's, or Enoch's lives, God was pleased with them. For you today, gold watches and a framed commendation certificate to hang on your den wall aside, what is it about your life that needs to be said on the day you breathe your last? For any of us, isn't it God was pleased? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.